Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Zagir. I'm here with my friend... Ninja Cam! And today we are doing a top 10 in grass-type Pokemon. There you go. Just so you guys know, this has nothing to do with the Pokemon video game. The Pokemon we choose, we choose from a more realistic point of view. On to the first Pokemon! First Pokemon coming in hot at number 10 is Livany. Ninja Cam, tell us about Livany. Levany is the nurturing Pokemon. It is a bug grass type. Its abilities consist of Chlorophyll, which boosts speed and sunshine, Swarm, which ups bug types at a pinch, and Overcoat, which protects Levany from things like Sandstorm, Hail, and Powder type moves. Uh, yeah, like sun, Stun Spore, Sleep Powder, Poison Powder. Uh, Levany is from the fifth generation, uh, coming from Unova. Its attack is its best stats, speed is second, everything else is KK. Is KK? Yeah, KK. You know, like, okay, but the way the one redhead from Victoria says it. Victorious. Hey. Anyway. Ayana Grande. Levany is the evolved form from Sea... Swadloon? Yeah, Swadloon. I almost said Sea Battle. That's the first stage. Anyway, <laughs> it is a very loving Pokemon. Levany is a bug and grass type Pokemon. Its signature attacks include Fell Stinger, Leaf Blade, X Scissors, and Leaf Storm. As mentioned, Livany is the nurturing Pokemon. The Pokedex states that upon meeting smaller Pokemon, Livany will weave clothing for it from leaves using the cutters on its arms and sticky silk from, you know, the place that silk comes out of. Yes. The Pokemon makes its own dresses and seems to have a theme for early 1600 fashion. Its name is a combination of the words leaves and nanny, also derived from Levana, which is an ancient Roman, Roman goddess, goddess of newborn of babies. babies. Basically, this Pokemon was meant to be a good mother. Yeah, you can't really badmouth this one a lot, otherwise you can just be an asshole for it. Your mom! By, by your mom, mom, I mean Levany! Oh! I wish my mom was half as nice as a Levany. A third as nice as a Levany. A quarter as nice as a Levany! Isn't your mother there with you right now? No, thank God. She's out of the house. <laughs> All right. Well, then. <laughs> on to the next Pokemon. Next on the list is number nine. This Pokemon is Victory Bell. Ninja Camp, tell us about Victory Bell. Victory Bell is the flycatcher Pokemon. It is a grass poison type. Its abilities consist of Chlorophyll, Deja Vu, which boosts speed and sunshine, and Gluttony, which makes it eat a berry earlier than usual. Hungry little bitch. It is a Generation 1 Pokemon coming from the Kanto region. Attack is its best stat, second is Special Attack. Victory Bell is the evolved form of Weeping Bell via a Leaf Stone. Being a Grass and Poison type Pokemon, this Pokemon's signature attacks include Gastro Acid, Leaf Tornado, Leaf Storm, and Leaf Blade. This Pokemon likes to use leaves. Could it tell by its giant leaf arm things? This Pokemon likes to lure other Pokemon in using a sweet aroma, often smelling like honey, and catching them with its vine, then swallowing them whole. This Pokemon's internal stomach acids can melt its prey within a day, bones and all. So remember in the Pokemon anime where Victory Bell would shove James inside him all the time, literally trying to eat him? How the hell did James survive? Seriously, this thing has stomach acids that will burn anything, and he goes in there like twice a day. Hashtag anime logic. Still, this Pokemon can pretty or this Pokemon can pretty much eat anything, and it just needs to catch it and shove it inside itself. This Pokemon might be into some weird stuff. Bound to go wow wow. Yo, baby, let me eat you real quick. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> okay, before this takes an awkward turn, on to the next Pokemon. Next up on the list is number eight. This time it's the Pokemon Roserade. Ninja Cam, the fuck is a Roserade? Roserade is the bouquet Pokemon. It is a grass poison type. Deja vu. Its abilities consist of natural cur cure, which heals all status conditions when it is switched out, poison point, which can poison the foe on contact, and technician, which powers up its weaker moves. It is a generation 4 Pokemon coming from Sinnoh. But I think, like, its pre evolution was it Roserade? No. Roserilia? Roselia. Roselia. That came from a different from generation. Gen. Anyway, its best stat is its special attack, second is its special defense. Roserade is the evolved form of Roselia, which came from third gen, using a Dawnstone, of course. I believe it's Dawnstone. I may be wrong. Anyway, being a grass slash poison Pokemon, this Pokemon's signature attacks include Venom Drench, 
Toxic Spikes, Petal Blizzard, and Petal Dance. This Pokemon, is, or this Pokemon also likes to attract its prey using a sweet aroma, although instead of swallowing it whole, this Pokemon likes to, and I quote, down it with 30 whips hidden in its arms. Kinda kinky, but okay. Don't you go wow wow. This Pokemon is eloquent, moving as a free as a dancer as it strikes its opponents with its kinda kinky whips. This Pokemon contains different toxins in each of its two hands, but putting them together can create a non or a near fatal toxin. Basically, this Pokemon is like poison ivy from Batman, but less human and more plant y. Yes. Anyway, this Pokemon is pretty badass, might be into some kinky stuff, but we're not here to judge. Well, I mean, you know, besides the whole judging them onto a top ten list of their type. Anyway, Roserade! Pretty cool. Yep. I really don't have a lot to say about this Pokemon that I can say in this video, because apparently we deemed yeah, it you need to be inappropriate quiet now. You need and to be quiet now. hateful. So, on to the next Pokemon! I blame you. Coming in at number seven, this Pokemon is none other than the OG Executor. Ninja Ken, what is Executor? Executor is the coconut Pokemon, which is confusing since it evolves from a fucking egg. It is a grass psychic type Pokemon. Its abilities consist of chlorophyll, deja vu, which boosts speed and sunshine and harvest, which may create another berry after one is used. It is a generation one Pokemon coming from Kanto. Special attack is its best stat. HP and attack are equally second best, I think. I don't think I think it's equally. Don't remember. Move on. Executor is one of my original homies back in Gen 1. This Pokemon is the evolved form of Execute via a Leaf Stone. Executor is a grass and psychic type Pokemon. The grass part makes sense considering that it looks like a coconut tree, but the only possible connection to the psychic type I was able to find after like 5 minutes of research is that it's semi based off the Japanese monster Jiminju? Which is like a tree monster with fruit that resembles human faces. It's weird Japanese stuff. Anyway, its signature attacks include Seed Bomb, Confusion, Psy Shock, and Wood Hammer. Also Leaf, leaf Storm. Or leaf Storm. The Pokedex claims that on rare occasions, one of its heads will fall down and become an Execute. Right. So does that mean it, it's one of the few rare occasions where a Pokemon goes backwards through the evolutionary cycle? What the fuck? Why is this not mentioned? It's pretty much the same thing like a fucking Digimon, right? He goes backwards. <laughs> no. Dude, get this Digimon shit out of here. Even though it's three heads think independently of each other, they often work together to do things. This Pokemon is often called the Walking Jungle, even though it originally came from the tropics. This Pokemon may not be the best, but he's one of my homies and will always be there to help kick major ass all over Kanto. No matter how confusing he is. Well, well what, what part of him, besides the whole everything, is confusing? <laughs> uh, it's mainly just the everything part. Well, you have to look past the everything, and then you won't be confused. The key to solving all confusions is to stop thinking about it. Hmm. Yeah, I could see that. Alright, on to the next Pokemon. Next up is number six. The Pokemon is none other than Good Goat. Ninja Ken, what is Good Goat? That's not what a Good Goat is. That's like oh, a sheep. okay. That's a difference. We're not, we're not talking about Goat Sheep. <laughs> good Goat is known as the Mounts Pokemon. You know, I didn't realize how dirty that sounded until right now. Good Goat is known as the Mount Pokemon. It is a pure grass type. Its abilities consist of Sap Sepper which boosts its attack when hit by a grass move instead of actually getting hurt by them, and Grass Pelt, which boosts its defense in grassy terrain. It is a Generation 6 Pokemon coming from Kalos. Its HP is its best stack, second is attack. The goat is the evolved form of Skidoo and a pure grass-type Pokemon. This Pokemon's signature attacks include Razor Leaf, Seed Bomb, Horn Leech, and Leaf Blade. As mentioned, the goat is the Mount Pokemon, meaning people fucking ride this thing like there's no goddamn tomorrow. <laughs> Literally, a feature in Pokemon X and Y version was you got to ride this thing around from time to time. And you bet your sweet ass around this thing saying, Wee! <laughs> this thing also hopped fences and shit. That's fucking legit. Anyway, it is said that Kago can tell how its trainer is feeling by subtle shifts in its grip uh, when they grip the horn. This Pokemon typically lives in herds and mountain ranges. It decides the leader of the herd by clashing horns. 
Anyone else seeing a trend of deciding the leader by beating the crap out of each other? One of these days, someone needs to show Pokemon democracy. Democracy doesn't really apply much to Goat, but anyway, that's all besides the point. The Goat is your mountain friend and it's pretty badass and it will let you ride, on, it will let you ride it into battle. And because of all of this, it charges its way onto number 6 of the list. It can also learn Surf, so it can actually ride it in the water. Can it learn Surf? <laughs> it can learn Surf, I looked it up actually. So you can ride it on land, and you can ride it in the ocean. I mean, if you like ripped a Pokemon's wings off and like attached it to Goat surgically, he can fly. Then you can ride it in the sky as well. Exactly. Awful place. On to the fucking next Pokemon. No fucking, never mind. On to the next Pokemon. Number five coming in hot is the Pokemon Celebi. Ninja Cup, what the fuck's a Celebi? According to you, it's an onion fairy. I don't... Go on. Celebi is the time travel Pokemon. It is a psychic grass type. Its abilities consist of one, natural cure, which heals all status conditions when it is switched out. It is a generation two Pokemon coming from the Johto region, and all of its stats are exactly the same. They're all at like, what, 100, right? Yeah, I think so. Celebi is the onion fairy Pokemon. Okay, it's not actually an onion fairy, but it kind of looks like one. It's actually a Pokemon that can travel through time. It's even got its own movie. Which it may or may not die in. Besides the point, Celebi's signature attacks include Confusion, Magical Leaf, Future Sight, and Leaf Storm. Even though Celebi is genderless in Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Time, Darkness, and Sky, Celebi is referred to as female. This Celebi is also the only shiny Pokemon in all of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, prior to the WiiWare games that never made their way to America. It is said that this Pokemon is the guardian of the forest, and that grass and trees flourish in the forest in which it appears after traveling through time. The Pokedex also states that when Celebi, when Celebi disappears deeply into the forest, it is said to leave behind an egg that it brought from the future. So this Pokemon kidnaps some unborn children, take them back in time, and drop them off in the forest, then leaves. Kind of sounds like Celebi is trolling babies before they're even born, taking them away from their parents and abandoning them in a completely different time. Dick move, Celebi. Dick move. In any case, Celebi has good stats, good moves, and it takes number five. Now on to the next Pokemon. Number four on the uh, list of the Pokemons is Shaman. <laughs> what is Shaman? Shaman is known as the Gratitude Pokemon and is one of my favorites. If not included in the list, it would have been included in the honorable mentions. In its land form, it is a pure grass type, but when it turns to its sky form, it is a grass flying type. Shocking, I know. Its land form... Its ability is Natural Cure, which heals all status conditions when it is switched out, and in its sky form, its ability is Serene Grace, which boosts the likelihood of additional effects occurring. Whatever the fuck that means, I don't know. I just type, write it down. It is a Generation 4 Pokemon coming from the Sinnoh region. In land form, all of its stats are exactly the same. However, in sky form, its attack, special attack, and speed all get a boost. Speed being the best, second special attack... Uh, third is attack. Its defense and special defense get lowered, however. Shaman. Everyone's favorite green hedgehog flower thingy. This little puffball is a legendary Pokemon. No, 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 I'm, I'm serious. Not only is it a legendary Pokemon, Shaman is the only pure grass type legendary Pokemon, you know, before it transforms into a sky form. Shaman has decent stats, 100 base stats in every category until it transforms into its sky form, as Nidikai mentioned, where all the stats are jingled around a bit. This Pokemon's signature attacks include Magical Leap, Energy Ball, and Seed Flare. Interesting fact about its transformation ability, everyone is aware that Shaman needs a Grisidia flower in order to transform. However, a Shaman caught at the Flower Paradise and Platinum will be a faithful encounter Pokemon making it the only Pokemon able to be caught with this kind of status. This is what allows it to transform into Sky Form, as a non-fateful encounter Shaman cannot transform. This is why Elk Slider was never distributed in Diamond and Pearl, along with the fact that many players use the glitch in order to get Shaman, so this prevents cheaters from profiting. Only a Shaman in Platinum was allowed to transform, when to give it a Cressidia Flower. Anyway, when it does transform into its sky form, it stops looking like a hedgehog and looks more like a reindeer type thing. Maybe like Rudolph? I don't know, reindeers. I think there is a reindeer Pokemon, actually. Stantler. Yeah, there we go. This Pokemon can dissolve toxins in the air to instantly transform ruined lands into lush fields of flowers. 
So for so helping, helping Sui Kun, God damn, you almost got me saying Sui Kun. <laughs> okay, so for helping Sui Kun on its fight to protect the environment, Shimin gets the number four spot on the list. You know, when those two work together, they could probably save the world. As long as they, you know, annihilate humans, because as long as those bastards are around, they're always going to be polluting the entire fucking planet. Well then, this took a turn. On to the next Pokemon! Number three on the list is the other legendary grass type Pokemon, Verizian. Nichikan, what is a Verizian? Verizian is known as the Grassland Pokemon. It is a grass fighting type Pokemon. Its ability is Justified, which boosts the attack stat when hit by a dark type move. It is a Generation 5 Pokemon coming from Unova. Special Defense is its best stat, second is Speed. Verizian is often confused for Verizon. As hard as it may be to believe, Verizian is not a cell phone company and does not provide any fast Wi-Fi or internet speeds. However, if you're looking for a good deal on grass and fighting type Pokemon, Verizian may interest you. Verizian's signature attacks include Giga Drain, Sacred Sword, Leaf Blade, and Close Combat. Verizian also has the highest special defense space stat out of all grass and fighting type Pokemon. It is the only legendary or yeah, it is the only grass legendary Pokemon that isn't an event Pokemon. Not trying to say it's less special, but you know, kinda less special. Verizian is one of the Swords of Justice trio, meaning that a magical blit will grow on top of its head, which it will use in its battle to provide you the best deals in your local LTE network. I mean to protect its friends in battles and nothing to do with cell phone companies. No, I just blend the name, it just sounds so much like Verizon. Anyway, being a badass Pokemon, this Pokemon makes its way onto number three of the list. I don't know what else to say about Verizian, I really don't have a lot to say. I mean, it's a grass fighting type, it looks like a stupid deer that grows an extra horn on the top of its head. It sounds like a cell phone company. It's not, not really a lot for me to say here. Well, I mean, you don't have to say anything then. Just move on to the next one. Fine, on to the next one. <laughs> Number two on the list is the Pokemon Abomasnow. Ninja, what is Abomasnow? Okay, really quickly before I go on to this, we're getting through this really fucking fast. Yeah. yeah. All right, just yeah, okay. Abomasnow is known as the Frost Tree Pokemon. It is a Grass Ice type. Its abilities consist of Snow Warning, which makes it hail when it comes out, and Soundproof, which grants him immunity to all sound-based attacks. It is a Generation Four Pokemon coming from Sinnoh. Its attack and special attack are equally its best, but not by much. Second is HP. When it Mega Evolves, its attack and special attack get huge boosts, so does its defense and special defense, but not as impressive. Unfortunately, it also becomes even slower than it already was, making it as slow as a fucking Slowbro. Above snow is a giant frozen tree of awesomeness. This Pokemon excels in both grass and ice type attacks. Its signature attacks include Razor Leaf, Ice Shard, Wood Hammer, and Blizzard. If you're smart with your ABCs, you'll know that Abomasnow was the first Pokemon to show up alphabetically. Odd fact to include, but still. Abomasnow and its pre evolutions is the only Pokemon with the grass and ice type combinations. Mega Abomasnow has the highest attack and special attack based stat out of all non legendary ice type Pokemon, and the highest attack out of all grass type Pokemon. This Pokemon is often referred to as the Ice Monster, and the Pokedex calls it the Abominable Snowman. Abama Snow, Abominable Snowman. GG on the name, Nintendo. Anyway, this Pokemon can Mega Evolve, and funny fact, it gets much, much slower after it Mega Evolves. Its speed is literally cut in half, and makes it the slowest Pokemon on the list, by far. The rest of its stats are good though, and its ice attacks are great when it comes to a battle against other grass type Pokemon. Anyway, this fry this frost giant is number two on the list. Why are you licking a cracker? I like crackers. I understand that, but why licking? Because eating it would make sounds. <laughs> on to the next Pokemon. Number one on the list might be some kid's first ever Pokemon. This Pokemon is a mean green and fighting machine whose mastery of the grass type puts it above all others. Its badassness overshadows everything else and has made its way onto number one. This Pokemon is Skeptile. Skeptile is known as the forest Pokemon and is based off the Dilophosaurus. That's not important, but me and Zagger got into an argument about it the day we were writing this, so I decided to bring it back up. It is a pure grass type. Its abilities consist of Overgrow, which ups grass moves when in trouble, and Unburden, which boosts the speed stat when an item is lost or used. It is a Generation 3 Pokemon coming from the Hoenn region. Speed is its best stat. Second is his special attack. 
when it mega evolves, it becomes a grass dragon type Pokemon. It can detach its tail and launch it like a motherfucking missile, which is awesome. I don't know why I shouted that, but it is. Its speed and power get a huge boost, and it gains the ability Lightning Rod for some reason, which draws in electrical attacks and uses it to raise its special attack. I really don't know why they gave him that one. Skeptile, however, is one of my favorite grass starters. Skeptile, everyone's favorite green lizard dinosaur thing. This Pokemon is our number one grass type Pokemon. Skeptile's signature attacks include Mega Drain, Leaf Blade, and Leaf Storm. Skeptile has the lowest HP stat out of all fully evolved starter Pokemon, and is the lightest fully evolved grass starter Pokemon. Skeptile and its pre evolutions are the only grass Pokemon that belong to the Dragon Egg Group. Meaning it literally fucks dragons. Skeptile is also the only Hoenn starter Pokemon to gain the Dragon type after Mega Evolution. Mega Skeptile has the highest special attack and speed stat and base total stat out of all grass Pokemon. It, this Pokemon is very agile and can leap from tree to tree with ease. The seeds on its back is said to be bursting with nutrients that revitalize the trees. In the forest, this Pokemon's power is said to be unequal. The leaves on its forelegs are as sharp as swords. That's a tongue twister. Did you know that 15 minutes can save you 50% or more on car insurance? Trico did, and it's made it its mission to cut down the competition and save you as often as it can. Now it's a Skeptile, this Pokemon is still saving your ass, even without insurance. And it fucks dragons! That little tail on its back that detaches is used for more than one thing. Anyway, this Pokemon is just badass, and for it, it claims the number one slot on the list. Okay. A lot of people are, you know, if there, anyone ever actually fucking watched these, would probably question why Trico or fucking Sceptile was placed above Obama Snow. Obama Snow. Obama Snow, not Obama Snow. It's not a black man trying to run the country. You didn't have to say it like that. <laughs> <coughs> anyway, but people might be wondering why we put Sceptile above Obama Snow. I mean, it's pretty obvious that he should be number one on the list, mainly because of its ice type attack thingy, but uh, Zyger's going to tell you why we made Skeptile number one. So the reason we put Skeptile over Snow is because Skeptile is faster and it is able to use two special attacks, Detect and Wonder Guard. These are pretty much Protect type moves. In a battle situation, if Snow and Skeptile were to be facing one on one, theoretically Snow could be a Skeptile assuming it would take a hit, or it would give a hit. However, with Detect and uh, the other one, I forgot the name of, Skeptile could theoretically protect itself from one or two of its hits, giving him just enough time to overtake Snow in a battle. So pretty much, because of Skeptile's major speed, it's able to avoid attacks, and even if it does get hit, it's able to protect itself one or, t- one or two times, giving it the advantage over Snow. So basically, Skeptile proves Jacksepticeye's theory when he shouts, SPEED IS KEY! Okay, well, on to the honorable mentions! This week we have six mentions on the list! What? <laughs> I misread that. Go on, Ninja Game, go! Wait, what? Go! Go, goddammit, go! God damn it, go. <laughs> oh, this started off so well. Okay, the first honorable mention is Leafeon, because he's so fucking adorable. So I, uh, he was not really one of my favorite evolutions, but I used him a couple times when I was in the uh, fourth generation. The next is Ludicolo. But not because I like him, I absolutely hate him! Ludicolo made fucking Sapphire and Coliseum annoying as hell for me, and I want the world to know how much I dislike his stupid ass. Fucking so dancing piece of shit. So he gets an honorable mention, not because you like him, but for the exact opposite reason. Yes! It, I, I failed to see the logic here, but anyway, my other mentions are C Dot because he's just a cool Pokemon you can chill with and hang with. I mean, seriously, just look at C Dot. It's very chill. Next up is Jumpluff because this Pokemon is just cute, fluffy, and just a badass in its own right. And of course, we uh, are fucking doing a shout out to all the other grass starter types because even though they are powerful enough, we don't want to use every single starter in the top 10 list. That would be unfair towards other grass types. But more specifically, I wanted to do a shout out to my uh, homie Torterra because it's just my personal favorite grass starter Pokemon. Plus, Earthquake bitches. 
And that's all for this week. Ha! That's what you're wrong, Ninja Cam. You may or may not have forgotten, but every honorable mention ends the same way. With the honorable shout out to the number one Pokemon of all time, Minchino. <sighs> What's your reason this week? Minchino can use the grass type attack called Grass Knot. Which okay, that's pretty- not how it works! It doesn't need to work the way you think it works. Alright, that's all for this week. Uh, Ninja Cam, go! <laughs> God damn it. If you found this video pleasurable in any way, then please leave a like or a comment. Maybe even share it for your friends to check it out. If you thought me and Zyger were cool, first go get checked out in Mental Institute, then subscribe and check out some of our other videos. Next week, we are going to be doing Electric-type Pokemon. pika P. Fuck that little bitch. pika P. Say goodbye, Zyger. Bye!